Welcome aboard this sexy syntax service to Cockfosters. We will be calling at Cockermouth, Crackington Haven, Crotch Crescent, Dean's Bottom, Grow Plain, Honey Knob Hill, Jolly's Bottom, Bishop Sitchington, Booty Lane, and Back Passage, where the train will divide. Customers for Slag Lane, Thong, Ugly, Winkle Street, and Backside should travel in the rear four coaches. Customers for Knob End, Pratt's Bottom, and Sandy Balls should travel in the front four coaches. Hot and cold snacks and light refreshments are available from the buffet. Geographical special of Sexy Syntax. I've been asked straight away to do a shout out for one of our keen listeners called Mark Proud, who's going to be having a baby very, very soon in a few weeks' time. So congratulations. Um, but first of all, we must also welcome our special guest, Luke Anderson, today. Hi, Luke. <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the show. Um, it is a geography special, and of course, as you, we just introduced the show with a digital voiceover announcement, as you might typically hear on a train, it also got me thinking about sat-navs and how people have lost the ability to read a map these days. Uh, people have lost their sense of geography because they rely on a sat-nav. It's been branded by some places, some articles, as a learn-and-forget culture. Um, I don't know what other people think about that, but we're going to crack on straight away by first of all discussing different disparities between how we describe where we live, such as UK versus Great Britain, Netherlands versus Holland, etc. Then Nikki will um, lead this discussion on sexual place names, most of which were indicative in the opening. And then finally, we'll return to our pronunciation section as usual, which is a special extended pronunciation section because there's plenty of different place names which can be pronounced in different ways. So let's start with asking Luke a question. Now, Luke, if you were filling in a form and I said to you, Please state your country. What would you put? UK. UK. Okay. What about you, Nikki? I'll put UK, but I, I would like to say that the only reason I'll do this is because it's shorter than the rest. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Having said that, where do I belong? Now, that, is a, that exactly. is a very good question. Now, where do I belong? I don't know, really. Newcastle? Leeds? Mexico. Great Britain? Mexico? <laughs> but we're looking more yeah. at an aggregate level here. UK, of course, is the nation state we're in. What does the UK consist of in terms of countries? Does anyone well, for know? example, when I, whenever I say, you know, um, in Spanish, whenever I say what, what my nationality is, I would always say English. I wouldn't say British. Yeah. It does seem to be a sad fact that when I've been abroad, most people refer to generically people as English when they mean British. Yeah. Actually, people in Mexico just, just think I'm from London because that's all they, they sort of know. So there are generalisations, but... But yeah, English, I would say, probably English. That's being, so that's being more specific, yeah, because you've got England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and together they make up the United Kingdom of Great Britain, which is our island, and Northern Ireland, which is actually part of Ireland. And Ireland's, of course, split into the Republic of Ireland, which uses the Euro, and, of course, Northern Ireland. Um, the other thing that people don't always know is that Wales is a principality, which is slightly different to Scotland and England. I don't know if anyone knows any specific differences of what a principality what? actually is compared to... Well, principalities typically would still... While they might at one point have been sovereign, they sometimes would have been... Uh, they would have owed allegiance to another monarch somewhere. They're not necessarily. But uh, uh, the Wales has been annexed... was annexed by the UK going back sort of nearly sort of, what, eight, nine hundred years. I think, and then UK, uh, it's still England, sorry, England, yeah. England the English yeah. crown annexed Wales and it became absorbed fully into the U into England, goodness, and in under Henry VIII, he finally quelled the Welsh hordes, as you might say, and uh, it became then just part of England, which is why you would talk about sort of a law for England and Wales and a law for Scotland. Yeah. Even yeah, in I mean, the I've UK just got Parliament, the and um, it says you know if you go to a solicitor in England um, and Wales, you've got to do X, Y, and Z. But if you you know in Scotland, you go to Scotland. Yeah, well, they ne Scotland. they never they they retained their legal system in seventeen o seven. God, you're an absolute fountain of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> you should have young Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the thing, and it all counts as part. Of, if you if you add the UK and Ireland together. 
or, so, or should I say Great Britain and Ireland together that makes up what we call rather confusingly the British Isles yeah. so then that begs the question well what does it mean to be British because is being British saying that you belong to the British Isles which includes uh, the Republic of Ireland or does being British mean that you belong to the UK or does being British mean that you belong to Great Britain so I think it's very of... ambiguous that, I think you yeah. have to use it in the most recent sense of the word don't you to imply the, the political citizenship of the United Kingdom yeah. I think it would be well, so British means United Kingdom Can the be. problem is there's no adjective to say you're from the United Kingdom you can't say you know you're United, United Kingdom-ish <laughs> no British is the phrase isn't it is it though that's the thing I, I mean I, I don't, don't think you can argue it isn't <laughs> no because you could, it's not it's not in the in Britain in Great Britain is it because you're not from Northern well Britain. colloquially the on the, the British Isles yeah I mean on the on the news for example uh, they will refer to the British and they refer to Britain don't even say Great Britain, just refer to Britain. And usually we're talking about the mainland rather than including Northern Ireland, but not always. But yes, yeah. we it sometimes can refer. forget about Northern Ireland. I do Ireland. think, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it probably is, but you know, you've got, it, is, it is ambiguous, <clears throat> isn't it? It is. Very, I've tried to explain this to quite a lot of, um, of foreign people that come here, you know, <clears throat> uh, my girlfriend being one of them, you know, she's like, you know, what, what's this about, you know? Is Scotland, are you in the same country? Well, it's both a not? blessing and a curse, isn't it, yeah. of sort of nearly a thousand years of not having been not having had our system turned upside down completely yeah. or where it was turned upside down they, we, we then got a jippy tummy and went back to how it was didn't we yes um, exactly but I mean in terms of identity you could argue that for example me from Newcastle I've got more in common with a, a Scot than I have with someone from arguably. Cornwall you know it's uh, so well, it, it is a another... very identity, but it's technically you know a different country that's why you say you know wh- where are you from it's very difficult to answer it is, yeah. I mean, do you have to sort of subscribe to a country? Do you have to? Well, say the other what problem with saying the other problem more for the English than the Scots, the Irish, or the well, the Irish is my my partner's housemate refers to herself because she's from Northern Ireland, so she's Irish. I didn't know that until recently. Um, but um, and the Welsh because they're smaller. Yes, those are the three groups within the UK. Don't have a problem. They don't come across as as being nationalist, call themselves Welsh, Scottish or Irish. Whereas for the English, if you identify first as English and then as British, or don't identify as being British really, you then get accused, or potentially get accused of being a bit nationalistic, which then has certain other negative connotations, I might argue. Well, this is the thing, the more disaggregate you get, the more that there's going to be competition. And we can even drill down to the counties and of course, the, the shires or the shires, <laughs> if you like. This this opens a whole new can of worms. Um, so, Luke, you're from Lincolnshire. Should that be Lincolnshire, right. Lincolnshire, or Lincolnshire? Well, never shire, but uh, where I come from, we say shire. We say shire. Yeah. But what about York? I always say Yorkshire. I never say Yorkshire. So I think there's variance between the counties. Um, but obviously... Play, if we're using names such as Devonshire, we we definitely do not like Devonshire, um, yeah. but we blame the Americans for that a lot. And do you think that's just an American thing to think, put Shire on the end? People, um, I'm talking. Actually, you know, English people, British, are, <laughs> <laughs> locals. It's a minefield. They don't. They wouldn't say Devonshire. It's just Americans, really. Yeah. I don't yeah. even know. I would like an Australian come in and say. I think they'd probably say Devonshire, wouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. But when it's when it's home counties as well, you definitely put shire. So you say like Berkshire. Yes. The Berkshire. thing is, the Americans. You know, I mean, yes. this is a big stereotype. But the Americans um, seem to come over and just you know say their pronunciations. But I mean, it doesn't take too much to learn how to pronounce the word in the local way. You know, if I go over to somewhere like in Mexico and and they um, <coughs> sorry <coughs> and they pronounce a word in a certain way, I will, will pronounce it in that way. So, you know, everyone yeah. says Devonshire, for example. Yeah. So you would expect, like, Americans to come over and just learn that it's Devonshire because everyone says it. But they don't. They say Devonshire. <laughs> and, and, and Edinburgh. <laughs> and Edinburgh. <laughs> and Gro- Grosvenor. Gro- oh, Grosvenor. Grosvenor's the... Oh, yeah, that happens. In fact, when my grandma came over from, as she calls it, Kenya um, in the... <laughs> oh, in the that's 50s, very good. <laughs> um, she... she uh, she um, pronounced where well, she was working in Grosvenor Square in London, and she pronounced it Grosvenor. 
um, to which she had to be corrected. And yes, she does call it Kenya. In fact, is that um, Nanny Pickles, is it? It's Nanny Pickles. She has been referenced before. Now, post nineteen sixty four, that's after independence, we decided as a as a nation to call it Kenya. It's almost like a mark of respect. They're no longer part of the British Empire, um, and it is named after their first president, Jomo Kenyatta. Um, so we now say Kenya, but she's she's very old school and she still calls it Kenya. Yeah, um, maybe if, she's right, you know. But maybe, maybe she's right because um, Cabo, who's from Africa, he called it Kenya as well. Um, it's technically, obviously, the Republic of Kenya, but I think there's still a mixture, Kenya, Kenya. Anyway, more on pronunciation later. Let's move on to the next um, debate. Netherlands versus Holland. Now... Is it just me, or did it take the football team a long time to change their shirt from Holland to the Netherlands? It seems to have been quite a recent addition. Nicky, you know a little bit more about football than I. I don't know about that, actually, mm. yeah, but that's... Into, but, I mean, what? which one is right? I don't know. Well, Northern Holland and Southern Holland are two provinces within the Netherlands. There's The Netherlands is a nation with 12 provinces, but it just so happens that the two most populated provinces of the Netherlands are the two Hollands, and Amsterdam belongs to Holland um, as the capital. So, um, in the past, the nation has been renamed a lot of times. It's been called the Dutch Republic before, it's been called the United States of Belgium before, it's even been called the Kingdom of Holland. But now the nation is known as the Netherlands, and I don't know if any of you two still call it Holland. Sorry? The Kingdom of. Just a split hairs. The Kingdom of... Yeah, the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Is that what it's officially called, the yeah. Kingdom of the Netherlands? Yeah. Quite, quite pertinent, considering it's just been the news this week. The uh, new king. Oh, yeah. Tell us more. <laughs> Actually, is it relevant? Though? There's a new Probably king, <laughs> uh, Willem Alexander. The queen abdicated, as is the, nor- as is the norm, after 33 years. And the new king was um, appointed... Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. Okay, and I'm sure the news were referring to it as the Kingdom of the Netherlands. But the Netherlands um, hope so. is a yeah. sort of description of the place more than a, a name of it. Do you know what I mean? Like well, it's, it's both. It's isn't the it? Netherland, you know, the, the lo- Nether being the low land, yeah. low lying land. But in in I mean, French and German they refer to it as ex- in their equivalent to words they refer to it as just the same the low countries yeah it's the yeah, same Spanish it's but I think we tend to say Holland because that's where all the action happens that's yeah. where you know. Everything. well certainly in Spanish you would say Holanda more than País Bajo so I don't know uh, mm. Holanda you hear Holanda a, a lot more and I think I would call it Holland more yeah what, 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 I mean why, why change easier. it though that's the thing what, well, what? We, we went on a school trip back in 07 to Holland and our our um, hoodies they m- custom made for us which were all so oversized said <laughs> Holland 2007 on the back and uh, there was not one mention of the Netherlands on that entire trip not one mention even though we spent you know a good yeah. few or f- three or four days there so but why is it called the Netherlands then why, why are they changing the name it's like you know what, what's Britain like you know it rains a lot so we could call it you know rainy land <laughs> <laughs> you know we're not, we're not going to call it England or Britain anymore we're just going to call it rainy land where I come from parts of the county and the fens where I come from which is all at sea level or below sea level <clears throat> it um, it's parts of it are called Holland uh, there's a South Holland District Council and things like that mm. because the Dutch engineers came over and brought their expertise to drain the fens so that it could be farmed really interesting mm. okay well the next the next one then I've got to split hairs is if I was to ask you Luke which continent does New Le- <laughs> Sorry, say that again. Which continent does New Zealand fall under? Uh, very good question. It's I, off the top of my head. It's it's Africa. It, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. it's uh, Oceania or something like yes. that, or Australasia. Yes, yes. And if you look at quite a lot of map books, sometimes they split them in two. Quite a lot of the older ones from the early nineties will say. Australasia and Oceania and they'll keep having to use that really long-winded title for this this region um most modern ones will just say either Australia and Oceania so they've dropped Australia Australasia in other words or they'll just say Oceania um I only recently learned that it was pronounced Oceania I kept saying Oceana of course there's a nightclub there is a nightclub um, which (laughs) might lead to some confusion 
Um, in fact, on this very radio station, when I was reading the news a couple of years ago, someone went to put me on the spot and said, have you ever been to Oceania? And I genuinely thought they were talking about the continent. I thought, why did you phrase it in such an... Why didn't you just ask me if I'd been to Australia? Why did you say... You, you might have been to... Uh, they actually meant the nightclub, but there we go. Um, but no, Australasia is just a sub-region of Oceania. Australasia is literally, literally just New Zealand and Australia. Um, and then Oceania encompasses the wider region, so it also includes the Pacific Islands, which are broken down into three sub-regions, Melanesia, Micronesia and Polynesia. And add those to Australasia and you get Oceania. But like I say, some map books split them into Australasia and Oceania. But the Olympics, as you know, there's the Olympic rings, which each represent continents. And they're, by their definitions, it's Oceania as well. Right. Um, but of course, it is the smallest continent. Um, but then this also goes back smallest to, in what respect well in terms of land mass but this is where it gets interesting if you look at the dictionary definition of continent continents are always defined by land mass in which case it's wrong to say Oceania is a continent it's wrong to say Australasia is a continent the continent is actually Australia. much Australia yes much to the confusion of geography teachers who love that different I love the differentiation I don't I don't like to believe that Australia deserves a continent uh, you know to be called a continent because as far as i'm concerned it is a country but because it's the most significant landmass in that part of the world it is also the continent so um it's very very interesting do you say therefore australia or do you just do it by region and say oceania um, and also if you take that um the, the, uh, that idea you'd have to call eurasia wouldn't you something like that well this is the thing isn't it you, the back back then and when when con before continental drift <laughs> You would have had these much bigger supercontinents, yeah, pan pan if you yeah, like. Yeah. yeah. Well, the final bit then, before we move on to sexual place names, was um, speaking of Australia. As you know, we often classify the world into the developed world, the developing world. However, there's a new politically correct term which tends to be used more in the literature now, which is the global south. Now, the global south almost assumes that every country in the northern hemisphere is developed and all the countries in the southern hemisphere are underdeveloped however australia falls in the if you look at the map the 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 line actually goes yeah. uh, under global... australia <laughs> you've also got south africa which is arguably developed chile as well they all fall in the southern hemisphere yet they're being labeled global south and global south is a euphemism for the poor nations or the third world so what what term do we use do we say third world does that imply third world citizen first world citizen citizen do we, <laughs> <laughs> edited out do we say um developing developed how do you measure development is it purely done on economics or is it done on other indicators such as the human development index in which case norway scores the highest there's also this idea of splitting west and east the western world westernization what what do I think you westernization say? Westernization is is not is is not so much about development though, is it? It's more about let, let's call it ideology. Yeah, cultural like, practices, culture, cultural and, imperialism. Um, but yeah, Luke, what do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> where does one start? Um, What's the correct way to say to refer to the countries that are? And we haven't got long, by the way, as well. So it's been, but we can edit it out. It's fine, it's fine. We'll edit it out, but like, yes, so we've got enough out. time for Nikki's bit as well. So that that's yes, it. I had no idea really what to say about that, to be honest. Um, I think it's very difficult. I remember having the discussion last year in a class um, about uh, talking about developing, underdeveloped, um, uh, and all of these different yeah. turns of phrase that you refer to. And I thought that sort of developing countries was perhaps a better one however actually that is a little bit ambiguous in the sense that well aren't we all still developing humans by default develop so yeah, perhaps i think it's, it's a bit patronizing to say, yeah. a potentially bit developing yeah. yeah pat them on the head but then yeah. i think it is um, more patronizing to say <clears throat> the poor nations that's well. disgusting yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a, it's that. a judgment call as well yeah poor, i mean you got, what is poor i mean you know, yeah. You the, uh, when we when I did GCSE geography, sorry, I did A level geography as well. Yeah, you, you had the the LEDC. Oh yes, the, the MEDC and the NICs in the middle, the newly industrialised countries. Oh, Absolutely. that's yes. They don't use that anymore. If you look oh, at the if anymore. you look at the textbooks, they do. What are these on, now? Global they, South. They usually well, yeah. They say at, at, at degree level certainly they say Global South. In schools, they have the Hicks and the Licks, so the high income countries, the low income countries. That's, that's more, which that's isn't okay, too bad. That's, that's objective. That's least, some examples though. Mm. Some 
because the examples will just say developed, developing. I mean, there's different ways. They want to make it as easy for the students, though, don't they? Just by having lots of buzzwords and acronyms. But um, it's like MNCs, multinational companies, versus TNCs, transnational corporations. It is important, though, to so. choose the right phrase, you know, because you, you don't you don't want you want to have something that is politically correct, you know. And we're, yeah, we, we know that politically political. Political correctness has gone mad, but uh, <laughs> we also, you know, we buy into the idea that, you know, it's there for a reason. So, you know, yeah. you've got to be careful what you say. You can't just... You do. Okay. And we will we, we will return to um, place names very shortly in, in terms of normal place names. But first of all, we're going to go to some more unconventional um, local level names, street names, which might have sexual connotations and... Sexual connotations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I've got some. Uh, I'm not gonna do that a bit though. No, Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Back. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be a Okay. Right, guys. So we've got some interesting place names in the UK, and then Luke Anderson is gonna um, enrich my ideas with some foreign names. Yeah, you happy to do that? I'm very happy oh, to do that. Good, 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 good. Right, so, what do you think about these? Um, I mean, quite a lot of them were uh, were announced on the train as we, uh, as yep. we entered this sexy syntax service. Um, <laughs> what do you think about these? Back Passage London. There is a, there's a little alleyway in the EC1 postal district called Back Passage. <laughs> I wonder if you live near there. You see, I'm just going down Back Passage. Well, there's a place for everyone, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Backside Lane. In Oxfordshire, yeah, that's good. So, right, I've got one called Bell End, okay, and which is, which is ironically near Licky End. Really, <laughs> <laughs> full of campinologists. Yeah, which is uh, uh, on the western side. Of, it's a village, and um, on the western side of the village is Bell House, a Victorian Gothic mansion. So, uh, you know, it's. Uh, I mean, there's some absolutely wonderful places in our Great Britain or England or however we want to define it. Um, <laughs> I, I do like Bishop's I- Itchington. Yeah. Quite a lot. Um, which is in Staffordshire. Or Staffordshire. Or Staffordshire. <laughs> <laughs> is it Staffordshire? Or just Staffs. Staffordshire, I think. Staffs, yeah. Or Staffs. It does actually have written on here Staffs, and I had to, I had to think. Oh, there you go. Um, de- which is actually derived from the River Itchen, and uh, is a link to the Bishops of Litchfield. So that's there. Mm. Um, let's see what else we've got. Booty Lane. I love that one. I mean, what does that? I, mean, I haven't booty been able to lane. find any information about. Well, that. won't that relate back to booty, as in, uh, ill gotten <laughs> not, go- not like Beyonce's Ill- booty. No, no uh, ill gotten goods. Lopez. <laughs> sort of ill gotten goods. Because uh, from my hometown, there's a street called Lickapon Street, and <laughs> is it? apparently they used at one point to be a pond there, and people would put ill gotten rum or whatever in bottles on string, and put it down in there to hide it. Because obviously, if the uh, customs man had found it, there'd have been held pay. So there you are. That's, that's fantastic. That's a, so booty, I'd well, assume that's must be North Yorkshire. Isn't it? So. What's a liquor pond? Uh, no, booty lane. Ah, yeah, booty lane. Liquor pond is in in Lincoln. In Boston. Yeah. Boston. Boston. <laughs> Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you lived in the in the town of Broadbottom. Would that, yeah, would that, uh, <laughs> I mean, imagine if you were particularly large, you know, and you did have a particularly broad bottom, and you lived in broad bottom. It'd it would be, be quite funny, wouldn't it? Yeah. It would be, yeah. I wonder why the uh, there's a there's a hill in uh, Cornwall called Brown Willy. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Presumably, that's got something to do with William. It's um, one thousand, or should I say, thirteen seventy eight feet above sea level. Oh no, do it in metres <laughs> or kilometres if <laughs> yeah. you want. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, you, you think, oh, yeah. you, you didn't get, you didn't get my job. Right. Oh no! <laughs> so uh, th- there's uh, a place in Northumberland called Cock Play. Okay. Yeah. So goodness knows. Cold Play might do a gig there or the something. <laughs> 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 you just imagine it, can't you? What Cold Play at Cock Play? Yeah. Um, great Cock Up and Little Cock Up, which are hills in the Lake District. No, I've got some information about this. The fell's name originates from the Old English language, which is a combination of the words cock and hop, where hop means secluded valley and cock means a woodcock or black grouse. Oh, yeah. So basically anything that's got cock in it, you know, you can kind of, you can write that off. It's not, it, it has a perfectly normal... So, so what is uh, the cock referring to? A bird? 
Yeah, you know, a, yeah. a, a, a sort of grouse. Um, well, yeah. Wood woodcock. Grouse. Really quite <laughs> small. <laughs> with a Crotch long crescent. Long beak. <laughs> Sorry. Woodcocks are really quite small with a quite long beak. Are they? Right. Mm. That, that's good to know. So so yeah. Crackington Haven. I absolutely I love that. That sounded love. so good when we did the Judy Berry voiceover at the yeah, beginning. Which apparently is popular with campers, walkers and geology students. So there you go. It's uh I it's like Boggle Hole. That's where we went on our. Boggle um, Hole. That's yes, where we went on yeah. our field trip. We did as well. Did you go to Boggle Hole? Did you go to Boggle Hole? Oh. You mm. on the, you oh, we did. We had to do a bit of geography at Boggle Hole. Yeah, Horrible okay. place. And uh, what else have we got? <laughs> We've got. Um, um, if he listens to this, a uh, good friend of ours, um, Dean. We call it Dean's Bottom. Uh, <laughs> just in Kent. The faculty dean. <laughs> I've got uh, one in Hampshire called Feltham Close. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't yeah. get it straight. You don't away. get it straight. Away. Felt and closed. Friar's entry. I can imagine. <laughs> Friar's entry. Yeah. <laughs> you can imagine just the yeah. Like, oh, you can all imagine. Golden balls. <laughs> I've got no. I've got no information about golden balls. Couldn't find it, but that's great. Great. Happy bottom. Dorset. Honey knob hill. <laughs> oh, that's in Wiltshire. Our average, uh, Kent seems to have quite a lot. I mean, I think. The further south you go, there seems to be a, a lot of these yeah. sort of things because they, they kind of sound a bit posh, don't they? I do. Uh, yes. We've got uh, horny man, which oh. is probably pronounced, you know, Horniman or something like that. Horniman. Oh yeah, yeah. Horniman, wouldn't it? Horniman, horniman, horniman. horniman yeah. But uh, I see it as Horniman. Horny old road as well, and uh, Malvin Wells, wherever that is. Jolly's Bottom. What else we got? Knob End. I love Knob End. I think Knob End do is you? one of the best. <laughs> you got something to tell us, Nikki? Yeah, I do. Uh, I do like a bit of Knob End. No. <laughs> Erase that from the records. Uh, <laughs> it's in South Lancashire and it is the site of a former waste tip, which is now a site of special scientific interest. Oh, yes. Let's use another acronym and SSSI. <laughs> <laughs> and a oh, local nature special. reserve, brackets LNR. <laughs> Licks and Hicks. Goodness, this is just acronym overload. Yeah, Sandy Balls in Hampshire, if you remember that from the. Um, Very dry, that place, I think. Is it? Yes, I think it would be, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A long established holiday centre in New Forest, Hampshire, with a name dating back to Henry VIII, apparently. Mm. Sandy Ball. Scratchy Bottom in Dorset <laughs> is a cliff top valley between Dirtle Door and Swirehead in Dorset. The name is thought to revert to a rough hollow. And the location came next after, and I can't say this because it's a name, Shitterton. <laughs> also in Dorset. In a 2012, or 2012, if you are. Um, Modern, let's say, <laughs> <laughs> for Britain's worst Paxman place. <laughs> so there was a survey for British, British, <laughs> Britain's worst place. There was a survey uh, for What's... Britain's worst place. Look at that. There was a survey for Britain's worst place. There, guys, out by the genealogy website, find my path. What's that English? <laughs> I don't know which bits of that are going to be in the, the for, the, for the, the radio. We'll um, I'd have to obviously get yeah, down yeah, for we'll, half oh, oh, absolutely. We can we can make it go a bit longer for the podcast. It's not like we've got a limit. So mm. okay, um, so we've got Slag Lane in Merseyside. Like, chop out a massive chunk. From the, yeah, right. I'll, I'll, I'll. So we've got Slag Lane in Merseyside, yeah. which is a residential street in Haydock mm-hmm. in Merseyside. I mean, I'm, I don't want to make any generalizations about Merseyside at all, but it's interesting that Slag Lane is from Merseyside. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have any side the docks. up north. No, Newcastle. no, no. Probably well, arguably Merseyside's up north, but yeah, um, north, ugly, ugly north. in Essex, not spelled. That is an spelled awful U-G-L-E-Y place. U G L E Y. Or Essex or ugly. Just, just to be Essex. have ugly in Essex. It's just, or it just. Yeah. Ugh. So the name probably oh, means woodland clearing of a man named Ugger. Oh, so that's there you go. Wow, they Willy. pack a lot of meanings. These words. They do. Oh, they, they all have then. meanings. I mean, not, they don't just make the names to sound like something sexual. You know? No. Willie in Warwickshire, Shropshire, and Herefordshire. So there's quite a few. There's a mouthful. I'll spell that one. I'll spell it Herefordshire. <laughs> Without the D. Uh, Winkle Street in Southampton. Mm-hmm. I love that. Backside. Boys Sack in Scotland, in Angus. Yeah. Broken Wind, Aberdeenshire, <laughs> which was named the UK's third, third worst place name in 2012. 2012. Really? And my personal favourite, and it's the only one that I've got from the list from Wales. Panty Feeling Road. That is yeah. such a good one. <laughs> Which is in Swansea. Oh. Right. And over the world. Um, Luke, do you want to enrich our, our lives? Well, you know? I'm going to defer to our dear friend from QI, or rather his researchers, Stephen Fry, 
who came up with a lovely long list of names that occur quite often in France that include Silly, Billy, Pratt, Chili, dare I say it, Pissy, Punchy, Misery, Condom. <laughs> All true. Where's and that in France, is it? I mean, they probably pronounced something totally different to that. But and then, of course, there's also Nancy as well. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and Bill Bailey came up with, he said that he'd been to a place in France called Beach. Beach? Beach. <laughs> yes. And I'm not talking about sand there. No sandy balls in beach. Um, beach. Brilliant. Um, not to mention, then there's some more quaint ones, I thought, like um, Plus Rien, which is j- just simply means... Nothing anymore. There's nothing anymore here. There's <laughs> nothing here. Good. Peace on l'air. So I'll let you work that one out yourself. Say it again, sorry. Peace on l'air. Peace on l'air. <laughs> and uh, something like, you know, green And then there's also, uh, oh, I, like, I quite like this one. Cité de froid cul, which literally means city of cold bottom. Really? Right. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. So don't go there if you don't like having a chili behind. <laughs> 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 then Germany's really quite good for them as well. Uh, Kuh beer, which means cow beer. I thought that was quite funny. One place is simply called Zuckerfabrik, which means a sugar factory. <laughs> Why would you live in sugar factory? Sugar factory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, equally melancholic as Plurien in Germany is Ende. End. <laughs> the end of the Just world. the end, yeah. It's yeah. the end. Um, and uh, Himmelreich, which loosely translates off the top of my head, I guess would mean Kingdom of Heaven. Oh, that's, a nice, that's a nice name, yeah. Or Empire of Heaven, perhaps. Empire of Heaven. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> you should call that instead of Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> then also, uh, in one part of the country, there's Darmstadt Wixhausen. Wixhausen, for those of you who don't know German, would be an establishment where one might go to relieve oneself with one's hand if you're a gentleman. <laughs> Very refined. <laughs> I'm glad we're in the, the sexy section. <laughs> then there's Schwarze Karte, which means a black hangover. Black cat, literally, but it could also mean a black hangover. Okay. God, I've got Karte in German. Yes. Very good. Very good. Keep going. Um, keep going. Oh, well, I can go on and on. Yeah, well, we'll just record it. I mean, why not? You know? Why we can, not? We can delete you know, stuff off if, if and when. And when and if. Fickenhof. Getting a bit blue now, lads. Fickenhof, which would sort of mean like the F word courtyard. <laughs> okay. Something Again, along no those refined. lines. <laughs> yeah. The effing courtyard. <laughs> the effing courtyard, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what else? Let me have a little look down my list. Which other ones? Oh, petting in Germany. Yes. Is that what it literally means, or is that what it's... It's how it's said. This is the word petting. Yeah, yeah. Get a bit of petting on the so that one's head. only funny for us. Yeah. <laughs> not, not for the Germans. For yeah. yeah. Does that? What does that mean, something, though, no, in German? I didn't look, really. Yeah. I just thought it was amusing in English, mm-hmm. enough to not bother looking. No, absolutely. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Nazi bull. Ooh, I don't know what bull means, but it had Nazi in it. I just thought, we can't go... We're talking about Germany without Nazi in it. We are British. No, that absolutely. might be a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in France, they've got one that's just called... Oh. <laughs> well, that's how I would oh, pronounce it. it. It's O, and then another O with a circumflex, which is like a little tin hat for those who don't have more than GCSE French. A little tin hat over the second O. Okay. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> another it's place called <laughs> Con. Con. And uh, Con, sort of, you might call somebody a petit con. It's a bit like calling them a little... Menace, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Pain in the bottom. Uh, they've also got another one in France. Now this is only on the the the, the pronunciation. It's not on the spelling. But there's another place in France called Bez, which Bez spells a different way in French means something really quite different. And we're getting back to the blue section there with that one. Leave that to your own imagination. Absolutely, the imagination. Uh, there are no limits to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, croton petit verre. Where a cot would mean a little turd. Can we say that? We can. We, we can, can say, say that. the word turd. We can. <laughs> 3.30 We can say turd, on a Thursday. that sacrifice is a bugger, does it? Is that how it works? No, we're not the BBC here, are we? We're not. Well, 
Well, we do. We do. We, 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 we subscribe to the uh, left wing communism, don't we? Or conservative <laughs> right wing. <laughs> that, that, that wow, that's quite a different debate there, I think, chaps. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Let's do it on another. I don't think that left wing, but there we go. Um, there you are. That's a, that's a, just a, a short selection of. Well, I'd like to congratulate you, Luke, not only for your excellent pronunciation of all those very hard to pronounce place names so well done yeah. and also um, well done for researching these as well thank you sorry not well that's patronising yeah, yeah, thank you yeah, yeah. well <laughs> done pat you on the back thank you thank, thank you, you for coming me. from your third world <laughs> house County. in uh, Lincolnshire <laughs> No, um, thank you for feels thank like you for sometimes. researching um, because um, and Sarah did some research. We always like it when our guests go the extra mile. Could I just so, um, say to you, like a very 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 quickly uh, a few more that I just found? Just, yes, just and I would word. like to add two as well yeah. once you've done. Yeah, okay. all right, okay. Well, yeah, I've got slut in Sweden. Yeah, which I'm sure isn't pronounced slut. It's probably slut or something like yeah. that. Yeah, um, I can say this because it's the name of the word vagina in Russia, which I'm sure isn't pronounced like that either. Probably not. Semen in Turkey. Crap in Albania. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> Crap Ming- isn't a swear word these days. No, so we can get, get it, away yeah. with it. Yeah. Minger in Lithuania. <laughs> Arsoli in uh, Italy. <laughs> Wiener in Germany. And now, now we, we're Wiener. just mentioning Wiener again because um, Mr. Booth, David Booth, who is an avid listener of this yes. show, uh, said something, didn't he? About What did he say? That Wiener isn't actually German, it's uh, Austrian. So yeah, correct. it would be Austrian because Wiener would refer to Wien, which is Vienna in yes. German. Yeah, that's so. So we apologise because I, I last um, uh, week I did say that Wiener was a German sausage. So mm-hmm. I'm absolutely ignorant. I apologise profusely. Um, and my personal favourite are piss and poo. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. We learn so much about you, Nikki, every day. Yes, we do. My favourites always have to. Be. I'm not going to be able to trump those. I'm just thinking of two childhood places. Which um, you know people seem to find amusing, but because I was used to them, I didn't. And one was Cop Doc, which is where my auntie lives. I don't find I don't think it's funny at all. Cop, uh, cop, cop just Cop Doc. Cop Doc. Cop Doc. Funny to say. I, I think. think it. I think it, it is. Like cock I guess block, I was innocent. Cock you know, block. Cock Block. Cop Doc. Are we allowed a cock? Um, yeah, because it's a name. It you is know, a name. We, we could say anything. But I wasn't allowed to say cock just then because that wasn't a name. I was just saying cock. All oh. oh, right, no, a penis. I'm just, I think I'm just going to edit out the cop doc. <laughs> yeah, there may be good. Yeah, and, and, down and this. same with same with Middlesex again. You know, that's a historic county, and everyone was like, oh, "You're from Middlesex." I'm just like, "Come on, guys, we don't laugh at Essex and you know yeah. Sussex and whatever." Sex ain't a taboo no more. It really <laughs> isn't. So anyway, that's all done. Let's get on to the pronunciation section. Woohoo! First word. Shrewsbury. 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 Oh, we're so BBC, Luke and I. Um, Shrewsbury <laughs> is the standardised um, way of saying it. But of, of course, the locals say both. And this begs the question, which is right? Um, I've heard all different theories about this. Some saying the commoners say Shrewsbury. The middle class and the upper class say Shrewsbury after, the, you know, the Earl of Shrewsbury. Look at what the, their grammar school called it you know what they call their school Shrewsbury um why Shrewsbury though well the ew in the word Shrewsbury is this, is is seen in the same light as the word so sew and that's what justifies the pronunciation Shrewsbury however on the other hand the football club is nicknamed the shrews so again that totally undermines the pronunciation but Shrewsbury the is unless the, it's is just to play on words thing, just call it a play on words, then it doesn't undermine anything. Well, exactly. Yeah. No, but so we can go with our nice RP class, shrew. Uh, shrew. Generally, football is working class sport, I so you'd say. Mm. Okay. So you call it the shrews, you know. So maybe posh people call it Shrewsby. Yes. The shrews. Shrewsby. <laughs> and you know, we we Luke and I say Shrewsbury. I mean, yeah. but it, when you, if you look at the word, you wouldn't. You'd Democracy say it worked, that you is. would just say Shrewsbury, wouldn't you? If you if you didn't know any different, I can tell you what the BBC radio <laughs> station, their BBC Radio Shropshire, they say Shrewsbury. Um, usually they they do. But I believe they've actually relaxed the rules now, so the the, the presenters are allowed to say either. So or anyway, either or either, either. either. Yeah, you listen to the show. It. Listen to the show. You should have listened to the American special. You would have therefore found out. That I do hope you discussed Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh. We didn't, but. Um, well, we'll what, save it for a rainy day. Well, well, well just say it now. Just you know, it's that, it's, it's not it. relevant. To the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. You say it's Pittsburgh. not relevant, Nikki. Be All quiet. Right, Edinburgh. Carry on. 
but that's we, so much of this is getting edited out. I apologise. <laughs> too busy. Okay, it's gonna make my life difficult with a three thousand word essay. Okay, next I'll do it for you, mate. Don't worry. Copenhagen. Should we just start that again? Because I was interrupting you as he said next word. So just say next word. Next word. Copenhagen. Copenhagen. Copenhagen, we all agree. Um, the, the only reason why I put it there is because the Americans are renowned for saying Copenhagen, which is actually um, not correct. The Danish prefer Copenhagen, but even that isn't close to how they say it. They say, uh, bear with me on this one, Kuben Hound. Kuben Hound. Kuben Hound. Kuben Hound. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it. Can't do it. But anyway, this this goes over to the wider debate. Do we pronounce it their way? Because you know, is it like do we say Paris because the French say Paris, or do we say Paris because in Britain that's how I we, think that's a very you know, very so we interesting look at our thing map to say. and we pronounce the things how we say it on our political yeah, map. For example, um, Adriana, my lovely girlfriend, is from Mexico and she lives near a city called in Spanish Guadalajara. Now, if you see that written, we would say Guadalajara. Yeah. So if you said Guadalajara, you know nobody would understand it. So you have to, uh, and and it's the same over there. Like there's a big shopping centre in in her city called um, Liverpool, but you can't just go yeah I'm going to Liverpool. You know you, we well, wouldn't say that because that's Geordie, but <laughs> you've got to say Liverpool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, when Manchester United play, they don't call them Man United. They call them Manchester El Manchester. You know, if you just say like Manchester, they don't understand what you're saying. No. Yeah. So exactly. you know, you, 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 I think you do have to. Well, the yeah, French we don't even understand. try to say London, do they? They say Londres. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. At least we say Paris. It's not far away from it's Paris. Like Paris. Yeah. Yeah. We don't say like you know, pars or something. No, no, no. <laughs> pars. Pars. Pardon. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it is. This goes to the debate, doesn't it? And it's the same for the for, for you know the next word I'm going to point to. Qatar. Qatar. Cutter. <laughs> cutter. Uh, because apparently cutter Pull the other one. Cutter, with stress on the first of all, is closer to how the uh, the Arabic say it, um, which is very, very difficult to say. I mean, I'm not going to even attempt, but cutter is much more closer. If you say Qatar, you know, it, it's not... I, I can see why you would say Absolutely. Qatar. You're influenced by the pronunciation mm. of Kuwait, because that's got stress on the second syllable. You'd say Kuwait, not Q8. Um, but it is apparently Qatar or Qatar. It's not Qatar. Um, again, do you say it their way? Whatever. Um, BBC recommendation, Qatar. So there's just a few more then, which I'll just quickly say. We, we, you know, there's Iran versus Iran, Iraq versus Iraq, and Pakistan versus Pakistan. So um, Pakistan, Abu Dhabi, that's and more Abu, of a Dhabi. Thing. Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi. Yeah, right? exactly. And I think it depends on what part of Great Britain you're from. So Northerners would say, yeah. No, Iran, Pakistan, but Southerners would say Pakistan, and the Americans would say Iran. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Iran. Probably they say Iraq. Definitely, they do. Yeah. Iraq, but as yeah. a Northerner, culturally a Northerner, believes or not, um, I don't like. It always feels when you watch the BBC and you see them all sat there, and they say sitting uh, there. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. When you see them all sitting there, and goodness gracious, <laughs> met my match here. Um, and you see them, yes, you see them sitting there, and they say Pakistan. It seems as though they have a Pakistan off. Who can say it in the most sort of RP way? But apparently, the reason why the pronunciation unit recommend Pakistan is because people from Pakistan prefer Pakistan, not Pakistan. They mm. don't like that. That's true. On the World Tonight on Radio Four, they there's a woman who is of sub-Indian continent descent, I think. And she does say sort of, she goes one step further and really goes and gets the, like the scouse on her K in oh, the really? Pakistan. I'm not going so to try and do it. So why don't we pronounce words, you know, in, in from other countries, you know, cities <coughs> and names of the countries in, in the natural language? You know, we just, we'll say cutter. Must come of... back from the Im imperial days, sort of, we knew best. So yeah. what we did, what we said went, I would say, I would guess. Yeah, we you know you know we we're not, we're not, we're not too good at pronouncing so. that you know we can't say no. we can't say no. Mexico we'll say Mexico exactly and mm. uh, you know and it is usually just down to how we've spelt it but there is a there is a really good example my last example because as you can tell we've time management today it's been an extended episode to say the least or should I say broadcast there it's not an episode that would get down we've said a lot of but 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 there's like one more I want to say and that's Niger. Now, of course, the river is Niger, that's fine, but the country is actually pronounced Niger, which stressed on the second syllable. 
Um, and that's one, you know, I, I, I'm just not used to saying, I'm not used to saying Niger. I just instantly say Niger because of the, just the way it's spelt. But, it, it, you know, yeah. it is... Well, as well, because there's Nigeria and you kind of... Yeah, you just think. instantly assume. Coming up next is the lowdown. Um, and finally, thank you to Luke. You're very welcome. Pleasure to be here. You've thank been you a very, very good much. guest. So thank, thank you. you. And we'll see you soon.